Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of Midrank Madness. Today we've got a game between ASYM and Wartorn on Mech Depot, the latter edition. In the bottom left hand corner of the map, it is the Red Protoss player ASYM. Hmm. How do we do this? A seam? Let's go with the seam. And in the top right-hand corner of the map, it is the Blue Terran player, Wartorn, from TT6. This is a Patreon edition of Falcon Paladin's Midrake Madness. One of these players is subscribed to me on Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for $10 a month. And as long as that is the case, I will cast one replay of theirs every single month that they send to me at FalconPaladin at gmail.com. If you'd like to be cast for Midrake Madness, which I do every single Tuesday, send me your gold, platinum, or diamond level replays to falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Midrank Madness. It is the most popular feature on the channel as far as people sending stuff in. So if you don't get chosen, please don't feel bad. You had to beat out probably 30 to 50 other people who also submitted their replays. It's a rough go. It is rough stuff to be chosen, but keep it up. Keep sending in good replays. I'm looking for creativity. Games that last longer than 13 or 14 minutes are also pretty strongly considered. And then, like I said, just stuff we haven't seen before. Hit me up with Battle Cruisers, for example. That might be something Wartorn is doing here. That is a very fast double gas from our Terran player. He's walling off at the front here. There is no probe scout from a seam. Strangely enough, going for a forge and a cybernetics core. Is a seam here, and then another gas of his own, so it's a one base Protoss versus a one base Terran. What is going on indeed? It is going to be a Reaper from Wartorn. He is straight up Wartorning it. Um, is that, is that an adjective? That's probably an adjective of some kind. Adjective? Adverb? Verb? Verb? To Wartorn something? Anyway, this is gonna be the Reaper named the Overmind. Ew, tentacles. That's the name. That is the name. Overmind you tentacles. All right, here we go. Overmind moving on out here. Going to be difficult to pull this thing off just because it seems going one base. And that means it seems should have some defense here. I feel as though that should be the case. Got the forge, but no cannons. Going immediately for a very fast stargate here is a seam. But oh man, no cannons, no mothership core. There is one queued up here after this probe. Here at the two and a half minute mark. So it might be out, especially if it's being Chrono Boost. This is on not patch 4.0. Uh, patch 3.9, I believe it was here. Reaper actually might get a probe kill. Probe just trying to expand, man. The Overmind gets the probe kill. Denies the expansion. Comes on in. Mothership gonna pop now. And gonna chase away the Overmind. Yeah, KD8 charge is thrown down. Trying to do some stuff. But you can't really stick around. Too long as you're a Reaper. You don't have many hit points. Expanding behind this is Wartorn. So it was a double gas opening, of which he's used very, very little to this point. Can I see spending? I can see spending. It doesn't break it down, unfortunately, though. Hmm. Not into minerals and Vespian gas. Regardless, second base on the way for Wartorn. He's building it inside his main. We do have a factory, getting a tech lab on that, and a starport coming up, too. So this is not quite a 1 1 1 build. It's close, though. But this command center built inside the main base is very interesting. I don't know what he expects to see from the Protoss player. I mean, it is a one baser, so you're probably worried about some things. But Reaper coming back in to get this scouting information off really wants to know what's going on here inside the main. It's going to see the Stargate, obviously. Nothing's being done with the Stargate, which is something I'm disappointed about. If you're going to make a building like a Stargate, do something with it immediately. Ooh, cannon shot, mothership core, finishes off Overmind. Got one probe kill. Denied an expansion for a little bit. I mean, there were some good things that Overmind did. Probably could have been a little bit more impressive, but that's okay. There's going to be a Voidery opening from a seam. All right, and holy smokes. Is that a Fleet Beacon? That is a four-minute Fleet Beacon. Ladies and gentlemen, from a seam, what is he planning on doing with that? Tempest seemed like a really bad thing to do for early game Terran, if that's your opponent. Carrier, little better. But man, two base carrier at four and a half minutes is real fast and really aggressive and really leaves you open to attacks from the Terran player. You notice here, Wartorn has a whole bunch of Marines. He's got a Viking in production here too. He's making a an, an medevac. There we go. He's got a Widow Mine. I mean, he's got a barracks. He's going to have a lot of stuff with which to kill your carriers. Vikings, very good. Marines, very good at killing carriers. 
Yeah, so that Fleet Beacon warps in here. Sub five minutes. And do we get... I mean, can he afford a carrier right now? He cannot. He cannot. It is 350, 250. He's sitting at about 200, 250, which is not too far away. When all is said and done. If he wants to go carrier, he's got to get both of these gas here at his natural base and start upping his probe count by more than 31. He is making two at a time, so he's working on it. He's doing his best. He's got a Twilight Council here, too. I don't think you can afford all of this stuff off of two bases. I mean, especially if you're not doing anything at all. Right? All right. Viking Prismatic Alignment. Excellent job. And does take down the Viking instantly. I mean, not instantly, but very quickly there. Prismatic Alignment increases the damage by Prismatic Beam to gain six damage versus armored units i mean that is they do so well against armored stuff the vikings happen to count battle cruisers count they can hit ground units too so marauders and roaches also take that extra damage as they are in fact armored is he going templar archives this protoss player is going templar archives off two base two i think asim just wants all of his options open i think that's it that's what it comes down to he wants to be able to do everything the protoss player can do and whatever he needs, he'll just make very quickly. It's kind of a Zerg way of doing things, but unfortunately, you don't have the larva mechanic where you can just make a whole mil bunch of million things at once. If you want to make a fleet of carriers, it takes you some time. He's starting, in fairness, he's starting right now, six and a half minutes. But again, Wartorn has a bunch of Marines. He has exactly 21 Marines and four Widow Mines and a couple Medivacs, and that's it. How are the upgrades on these guys? Absolutely non existent. There's no Stim, there's no Combat Shield. Plus one attack is just about to come in here, but getting additional upgrades would be super useful. Hey, look, Stimman Combat Shield started. And getting, is that the, what the, high capacity fuel tanks? That's the upgrade. Who was doing that? Kelzer was doing that in the WCS Global Finals, and the commentators were very confused by this. I believe it was Zombie Grub and, like, Rotterdam or someone that was just like, what is happening? We never see this upgrade. It just increases the Medivac's fuel reserves, allowing Ignite Afterburners to last 50% longer. Which, every pro I've ever seen, except I guess for Kalizer, has felt like the time on the afterburner is enough. There's really no reason to get the extra time. If you're trying to flee, great. You're either going to flee or you're not. It's just an extra 50% fleeing time is not going to help you all that much. An extra 50% is not going to help you boost into main bases faster, really. A very interesting choice here. Storm and Carrier... And a robotics facility. Asim truly has decided to do the entire Protoss tech tree. Has snuck a third base over here down toward the southern section of the map. Technically, I believe this is Wartorn's side here on Mech Depot, but Asim wants it. Asim is, yep, fully saturating the assimilators at the natural base. This is uh, shaping up to be a fairly interesting game. Is that recalibrated explosives? Wartorn's getting the upgrade for damage done. Actually, specifically, that is for auto turrets. Nope, that's secret missile. Dang it, that's only secret missile. And actually, this is out of date. Like, the 4.0 Ravens have been completely and utterly redesigned. All of their abilities are different. So, uh, this is kind of a blast from the past at this point. But, oh my, the marine count right now. It's 32 marines, a raven, 5 widow mines, and 3 medivacs. That's it. That's what Wartorn has. He's got the plus 1 attack. The stem's going to finish up here shortly. The plus one armor's going to finish up here shortly. He's got the combat shield. So for eight minutes, there could be better upgrades, but I'm not going to complain too much about it. A couple of High Templar defending here at the natural base. This mothership core is primed and waiting for a drop to come. A couple of pylons up here in the natural base would not be remiss. Uh, if you want to defend against drops, I mean, the closest pylons to that drop point are really far away. Some storms would be amazing. And both High Templar just barely have enough for one storm right now. And they are in position in this natural base to defend against this coming from the north. So here we go. Wartorn coming in with the Medivacs. And look at that timing on the boost. Gets right into this mineral line. Storm, go. Auto turret toss down too. The High Templar not doing anything at all. There we go. There's your storm. Oh, oh the Marines. Another storm. They're kind of trapped a little bit. And now they are all completely dead. The carrier is going to finish them off. The Raven is going to die here. Two Raven ends up with five kills, but is completely dead. Wow. That is how good storms are, you guys. Ten kills on that High Templar. And I think his buddy who died, and yes, his buddy who did die there. 18 probes got killed, though. Wow. All right, 24 Marines, a Raven, a couple Medivacs dead for 18 probes, a Mothership Core, and a High Templar. Uh, 
probably a fair trade, except for the fact there's three bases for a seam and still no third for Wartorn. He really, really should go for a third sometime soon. Observer comes into the main base or tries to come into the main base of Wartorn, gets picked out of the sky by this missile turret. Hello, person inside the missile turret. I didn't know you existed until Brood War Remastered. I'm kind of embarrassed by this. Whoa, he looks asleep. Doesn't he look asleep? What was that that just tried to come through? Please hold. Is that another observer? Yeah, a seam just kind of throwing observers into the into the fire here. Or the briar patch. Or the quicksand or whatever. Whatever bad thing you'd like to bring up. That would have mine fired too. <laughs> would have mine fired unnecessarily. Who got the kill? Missile turret got the kill. Excellent. Did not kill steel. This widow mine did not. Moving the widow mines down. Are you just gonna walk these across? Now they're here for defense. Solely for defense. An expansion. There we go. Warthorn's getting a third base here. You're probably gonna lift it off and land it. Here at this third base location, just outside of the main, at least down this cliff. Not a traditional third base location, but that's okay. And a seam going for a fourth base at what is usually a third base location. But again, he snuck this third down here, which Wartorn does not know about. He doesn't know about this thing. So, I like sneaky bases. Sneaky bases are a good way to win. And just double pumping carriers. The carriers did reveal themselves during the drop here at the natural base. So it's not as though they're going to be sneaky. Right? They're not sneaking carriers out. Obviously, by the fact that Wartorn is continuing to make marines, he knows what's up. He's quadruple pumping ghosts. Actually, did he stop the upgrades? Nah, plus two attack is done for the marines. Plus, uh, plus two armor is coming in here now, too. So both players fairly passive. I mean, Wartorn did have that one attack that did pretty well. Killing 18 probes is not bad, but it's 48 to 49 harvesters. Wartorn's up one. I don't know if that was entirely worth it, losing all of that stuff. This army would be a lot bigger than I now. If not for that problem he ran into. Um, trying to go for a fourth base. Um, we'll call this a third. Third base south of the natural. Hasn't landed. Oh, he's actually finding the command center down there. All right. So he built it inside his main in a place where he could just kind of land it down here. But instead, he's long distance traveling onto this command center. Here to that third base. Fourth base done for a seam. Throwing up five cannons to defend it. Got a couple carriers here too. It's just going to be a mass carrier as far as I can tell. I mean, okay, there are seven High Templar too. So we're trying to mimic who does this stuff. Pokebunny, I believe, has been known to do this stuff. We have actually seen... Oh, who was the Protoss player that tried this against Scarlet that we saw recently on the channel? I can't remember who it was. Anyway, there's another Protoss that tried it at the higher levels, but did not go very well there either. So I'd like to believe the carrier is going to be good here, but this Marine count is just too high. Marines are the best anti-air in the game, I want to say. But they've got Stim and plus three, plus three. I think they kill everything in the air faster than anything else. But Wartorn's moving out, man. He's pushing with his Marines. He's got Metavax. He's got Ghosts, probably for EMP at this point. And he's accidentally discovering this base. Did he, know this? he did not know this existed. By any stretch, Photon Overcharge is up. The Marines do not care about your single Photon Overcharge. Going after Assimilators, killing these cannons. Two carriers joining the party. That's not going to be enough, ladies and gents. Interceptors are getting burned out of the sky. Mothership Core down, throwing down a nuke. Oh, Void Rays coming in, immediately get burned down too. They're trying to focus down the Metavax and... Oh, these nukes. Is this nuke going to land on these carriers? Oh my goodness gracious it is. Maybe? No! Oh, just barely catches the edge of a couple of those, but then the Marines finish them off anyway. The nuke catches the trees on fire, finishes off the Nexus. Kills a bunch of probes there too. And this is looking like a game-ending push for more Tornade kills. On that goes the Storms though! What? <laughs> Look at all those dead Marines! Asim says, you know what? All I've got are these High Templar and a couple cannons. I guess there are still four carriers. Where are they? Not joining the party, but wow! How many kills on these dudes? Six kills? 24 <laughs> kills on that High Templar. How many Marines? 70 Marines have died in this. Did you see those corpses right there? I, think, I feel like you did. Woo! All right. So turning into a pretty darn good back and forth PVT. Wartorn trying to break down a seam. A seam defending best when a seam has High Templar with Storm to use. Now, the trick is to using the High Templar and the carriers at the same time in conjunction. Right? 
Right. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. I mean, because obviously the carriers themselves are not that great, but you can get rid of the marines, then all that's left are a few medevacs and a couple ghosts, and the carriers somehow are a lot better. Another nuke in production for Wartorn, getting a couple more ghost academies. He wants to get a nuke landed that takes out, actually, an army of the Protoss. At least make the Protoss worry about the potential of nuclear assault. Did, again, finish off this Nexus. It was already fairly injured and got some probe kills over here, too, but didn't get the big hit on the carriers like he wanted. Not that it mattered, right? Not that it mattered. The Marines took care of those carriers very easily. What stopped them was <laughs> going through this choke and just getting Sionic Stormed into oblivion. That was, I mean, some of the best storms. Some of the most efficient storms we've seen. Observer gets picked off. There is a seam totally blind, totally blind on this side of the map. Does not know about the third base of Wartorn at all. Again, being blind to your opponent's bases will kill you. And being blind to nuclear strikes will also kill you. Frantically searching for where this dot is, is a seam. And he doesn't see it. Good new. Catching the trees on fire. One of my favorite animations in the game is flaming trees. After nukes are dropped. And does not actually one-shot the carriers. But brings them down to about 100 hit points each. The shields have to regenerate, but they can't get those hit points back. That whole damage is forever. So it makes them much easier to kill. If you happen to be a Terran player with a lot of marines on the ground. Vikings in production. Quadruple pumping starports. Well, star uh, starports? Yeah, making four starports at a time is War Torn. He's probably not going to keep doing that. I guess saying quadruple pumping insinuates that he's going to keep doing it, but probably just this one-time deal. Resources lost right now happen to be 5,000. We'll call it a 6,000 for a seam and War Torn sitting at 5,800. So we are close. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very close when it comes to resources lost. The Storm's doing the vast majority of the damage for a seam. Wartorn getting a fourth base down south of his third, fourth base. Well, third base getting replanted for a seam. Sneaky base. I mean, I guess it's not that sneaky if your opponent already accidentally discovered it and probably knows you'll go back there at some point, but not scouting either. Although, he is, okay, so this ghost is scouting these bases up north. Not going to see anything, but it does count as scouting. It counts to see if there's a nexus up there, and there's not. Well, that's information. It's information that proves a negative. Proves... <laughs> That what is happening is not uh, an expansion there, so you can use that. 147 to 149 total supply. Wartorn is up. Wartorn is ready to rock. And by that, I mean he's getting plus one air weapons. He's getting infantry armor level three. Another nuke attempt. Is he? Wow, nuking from the base north of the natural. Going to get these cannons, but I don't think much else. Maybe a couple of these probes if we're lucky. Let's see if we get it. Ooh, yeah. Wow, more probes than I thought. Once again, so many trees aflame. Another nuke going down. I don't even know where this one is coming. Nine kills on that ghost. Oh, same same ghost. All right, ghost. <laughs> We're going to make this a very hazardous workplace. And more probe does. Oh, this probe comes in just in time to die. This probe comes in and says, what's, what's all this fuss? Gets the assimilator too. 22 kills on this ghost. Can you... How far is the reach on that thing? Not really far enough. Wow, did you see that? That's kind of cool. Well, it shows you the range. It turns it into a nuke thing. Another nuke attempt. This probe gets out of there just in time. Are these trees going to catch on fire again is my question. And the answer is... Ghosts. Gets murdered. But man, she did a lot of work. Yeah, once a tree's been burned, it can't be burned again. The things you learn, paying close attention to small things in StarCraft 2. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. All right, so carrier group, by that I mean four carriers and three Tempest. Moving out north, trying to do some stuff, but the problem is it's a lot of Vikings for Wartorn, and by that I mean a total of seven. With 67 Marines on the ground, the Marines do in fact have plus three, plus two. It is plus three air weapons done for a seam and Graviton Catapult, so he's not slouching. His upgrades are good for attack. And, oh, is there going to be a double prong thing here? Carriers trying to get rid of this fourth base of Wartorns. A lot of missile turrets. And, again, the Vikings themselves, really, look at these interceptors just absolutely get blown out of the sky. 
And these carriers without their interceptors are just worth nothing at all. That was incredible. Heading on down is a war torn. Gonna go after this third base again, throwing a nuke at the front. A lot of nukes at the front, at the very least, making it seem worried that what's going on is nukes on top of his army. The carriers die before the nukes land, and he backs his army out just before they all get in there. The High Templar dodging. Wow, that could have been a lot worse for those High Templars. That is so many dead probes. That is 64 dead probes. The High Templar by themselves trying to do this once again, storming on these dudes. Another storm would be amazing. No, not enough energy. The High Templar are dead. These guys are injured. But they're not dead yet, and all the interceptors out. We hear ghosts dying. Carriers A moving themselves into Marines with plus three attack and stim. And suddenly it's 152 to 92 total supply. The Tempests are not even a threat anymore. Medivacs need to be given time to heal up. That's what they need to do. Hold still for two seconds. Let the Medivacs heal up your army, guys. They have the energy, but if you keep moving them like this. There we go. Taking a second to get healed up. That is, again, another great animation. One of the, my favorite ones. Mwah, mwah. Beaming down energy from above. I don't know how that works, but it's pretty great. So 170 to 116 total supply. Continuing to make stuff back home. Is war torn something you definitely want to do no matter what race you are? Observer scouts this out and says, this is a pretty dead scary army. I don't know if I like it very much. And pulling back home. War torn says, I'm content to leave a seam with effectively one mining base. Yeah, we'll call it one mining base. Well, I'm on a couple at the very least, could probably afford to expand again. I see him sitting on 2,800 minerals and Wartorn sitting on 1,000 gas. Actually closer to six, just spent it on a bunch of more medevacs and Vikings. Hey, you know what? Good good choices, honestly. I is still going for carrier, which I don't recommend. I don't personally recommend you should keep going for carrier when you have lost. Guess how many carriers have been lost, you guys? Make your guesses now. Three, two, one, 11. 11 carriers have died in this game. Resources lost are bad. 17,000 for 900 for a seam. And a total of 11,700 for War Torn. He did manage to land his orbital command from his natural at this base just outside of his main. So that's one, two, three, four, five bases now. And the Protoss player is just afraid. Afraid to move out. And for good reason. You can't just keep making carriers when you keep losing them in straight up confrontations against this. This Marine Viking. If you're having trouble with carriers, Terran players, Wartorn is giving you a very nice blueprint. Blueprint? Blueprint of how to handle them. The answer is Vikings with plus one attack and plus two armor, I guess. And Marines that are fully upgraded. Still, still, wait. Oh, it doesn't have plus three attack. I got that backwards. He's working on plus three attack, but he's got plus three armor first. Very strange. Very strange indeed. All right, music is appropriately intense as Wartorn decides to move on down for another attack. He's maxed out. If you're maxed out, attack. Pro tip from Falcon Paladin. Just do it. He doesn't want to go back into this death ground. It's not the same one, but it's close enough. Here we go. Nukes at the front. He's not even bothering to attack the interceptors or the carriers directly. There are the storms, though. So many dead marines, but the nukes are going to land this time, ladies and gentlemen. And there it is. The uh, Golden Armada is gone. Wartorn lost a lot of stuff too, but a seam with the good game. Wartorn with a ragtag skeleton crew of army remaining. It's a well played. Says a seam. He's down to a total of 38 supply, and that's it. He's out. Wartorn is victorious. Making three more nukes back home, because that's what you do when you win with nukes. Wow. What a moment. Finally, getting the carriers with three separate nukes. Was, he, he was trying to do that the whole game. He was trying really hard. Yeah, the resources lost as usual. 27,000 resources lost for a seam compared to 20, period, for War Torn. 107 Marines died. I wonder how many of them was friendly fire from the nukes on that final one. 20 carriers. 20 carriers died. 215 interceptors. I mean, that was War Torn's pretty much his strategy was to kill interceptors. And then go after the carriers themselves. So, hey, it worked out for him. He didn't even have plus three at the end, did he? Nope. No plus three attack. It's close, but not there. Not quite there. That was a good one. Good, good edition of Patreon Midrake Madness. Really enjoyed it.
All right, so that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of Mid Rank Madness. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and the Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.
watch over you. Thank you.